Hey, what's up, everybody? BDF44 coming at you with another video. All right, figured I'd do another therapy session since they've been very, very good and I've been, you know, dealing with what I'm dealing with. So I figured if I ramp it up a little more, maybe they'll do what it's supposed to do and, and give me the effect I'm looking for. So that's what this is. If you guys don't want to hear me rant about my personal life, I don't blame you. I don't. Just hit me, hit a like on the, on the way out if you decide to. But uh, usually when I do these videos, man, I end up listening to them and I find something in there that I think is helpful. Uh, so hopefully I can give you something. But you know, the, the purpose is to just kind of ease my stomach right now. I woke up this morning, stomach and knots, anxiety, not as bad as two or three days ago, but yeah, it is bad. Uh, it's one of those situations for me where it's just like, you know, now it's the day after finding out that unemployment isn't going to be available to me. I got to figure out what the hell I'm going to do. You know, I got a situation where I thought I had done good. You know, I'm like, ah, I got $130 in my little cash out and I got about a hundred dollars, hundred fifteen dollars worth of expenses that to be taken care of in the next couple of days. So it's like maybe I can finesse it so that if the co if I pull it out at a certain price, it can recover and then give me a little extra dollars, maybe another extra fifteen. Complete opposite happened. That thing dipped to nine percent. The money that I put into it is gone. So now I got about a hundred and nine dollars in that account with literally like a hundred dollars worth of stuff to do. Um, yeah. So and not to mention that this is the real kicker: my cell phone bill, bro. The bill is so expensive right now uh, that, you know, I've cut it up into increments. And now there's going to be another 70 something dollars due in a couple of days. I don't know how best to go about paying that right now. So it looks like my phone may be cut off. And if that's the case, I'm dark. Can't talk to you. Can't talk to family. Can't talk to nobody. Can't even get to my car. Uh, so obviously one of the things I need to do for myself is just make sure that I take all of the numbers, self numbers, call numbers. And I encourage you to do the same. Take all of the numbers on your phone and write them somewhere tangible actual write, written down because what ends up happening is if you don't have your phone you're still gonna need those numbers you know and that's that's one of my goals today I don't have a lot of people I call I don't interact with anybody honestly but there are certain people that are going to need to be if, if things were to go completely haywire in my life there are gonna be some people that need to be contacted so for me the cell phone is the only conversation um, starter that I or pro, uh, path that I have to these people at this point without those numbers written down so yeah that's gonna be a goal of the day just something simple, something that needs to be done. Um, so I set up the appointment for Monday to pick up my car. I had the option to pick it up today. I blurted out Monday. I blurted it out. Didn't think nothing. Do you know why? Anxiety. Cut and dry. My thinking was, I'm not ready. I'm not ready to leave the house. Ain't ready. You know, it's one of those situations where it's like I've been in this place two months. You know, left to my own devices, left to my own mind i've had moments in this in this four or five month period that i hadn't had such as crying and stuff like that. i ain't cried since i was 14 years old in this past three six months i have been crying maybe twice or three times um and it's healthy but it's like those are the type of, of mental struggles that i've gone through changes that i've gone through in this house since the last time i was around others and i really don't know how i am going to be i really don't know how awkward i feel and i don't know how uh, what type of energy i'll have what type of energy i'll take back <laughs> the driving aspect of it even though i'm a i'm a good driver i haven't been behind the wheel in over two months going all the way out there having not even left the vicinity of this little you know this apartment i'm wondering how my equilibrium is going to be you know i'm wondering how i'm gonna drive i'm wondering how how that process is going to go am i going to make it home <laughs> like literally so those are the type of irrational fears that i that i suffer from i'm in the overthinking that i that i deal with um a, 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 a consistency you know um what I can say is I'm proud of the fact that I've been handling my weed um, shortage better than, than I thought thus far. You know, obviously, this is something that I do continuously as a sense I'm always in the house and I always have it. Uh, so at this point, I got little to nothing left, even though I've been telling you all it's nothing. It's little to nothing. And uh, I've done good. I've done good. I haven't needed it. I haven't wanted it. When I did want it, I smoked a little bit and left it alone. So that's how I have to play it since the re-up is not possible right now. <laughs> And that's that's just that's just a functionality of my circumstance. I mean, ain't nothing I can do about it right now in the short term. Um, so like that's just what it is. It's just this is a poor man's struggle, you know. And it's just like, um, you know, at this point I know that that coming on here is kind of something that can help me document these moments. And uh, you know, I do that. I do that, and I and I feel like if if it can't help, at least it can do the documenting. So now, uh, what else is there to to consider? <laughs> don't feel like eating I don't know if I got a chance to say that but that was part of the reason why I turned on the camera it's because you know usually this morning it, this around this time my stomach starts getting hungry you know I have a routine my body is used to 
and we are at a space right now where the stress is making it so that my body's not functioning properly. Uh, yesterday, I didn't feel like working out, kind of stayed in bed on some semi-depressed. I wasn't feeling depression, but the stress made it so that I didn't want to move, like do my, my regular routine. That's, that's counterproductive for my health, especially at this age. Can't move like that. Um, especially since I'm always in the house. So that's like, you must work out or you're gonna fall apart physically. Uh, and health problems is obviously something I can't handle being that I'm alone. So it's like, you know, just gotta manage that. Um, so I'm, yeah, worried about the cell phone turning off. I think I already mentioned that. Gotta find a way to secure that. Um, don't wanna touch my Fidelity account, man. I don't wanna go down the path of selling shares on that Fidelity account. I have a good, good portion and it's bleeding out on this particular day and it just, <laughs> It's where I struggle. Not wanting to work and not wanting to use the money that is available to me um, is a real, real mental hurdle. Because I feel like it's, you know, I've already sold out of a lot of shares to get my car back. Um, and, you know, as I start to go down that path of selling out of the Fidelity account, eventually I'll get to a point where I don't have anything left. And then this thing is going to do whatever it does and I won't be represented in it after this long year sacrifice, which I'm really concerned what that'll do to my mindset. That type of acceptance that all of this was literally for nothing. Um, that's something that, that I don't want to even go down that road. I don't even want to find out what that looks like for me and in, in my mind. So that's another concern. It's just like, you know, how do I how do I help myself? And then there's another aspect of it. So I do have a grandfather and, and an uncle who, who can help me. You know what I mean? And they have <clears throat> shown in the past that they'd be willing to. You know, uh, we had a situation where when my car got kicked out the first time, I uh, asked them to forward me to front me the money. They did so without any question. When I got the car, they fronted me the down payment. So this is a family who's always been in my corner. I never have to worry uh, about whether or not they'll save me if it comes between me and the streets. However, uh, part of my, my mental hurdle is, is communicating with them and being able to request or accept or, or feel the rejection of whatever choice they decide to make in that regard. I don't want to come to them uh, at all. You know, um, what they've been asking me to do is not unreasonable. You know, one, one of the requests that they had is for me to go uh, to a church or something like that and, and get some uh, some counseling, which is definitely something I'd be willing to do. Minus necessarily the church aspect of it. That's not really the way I want to go, but I'd love, love to go down the path of this, what I'm doing here, therapy. Um, and I just have not had an opportunity to really, really make that decision properly. Uh, I guess is the way I word it. I didn't make the decision, so... Um, yeah, there's reasons for that. Obviously, without a car, COVID, you know, I, I haven't been vaxxed, unfortunately, which is something I'm open to doing. <laughs> but it's just one of those situations where it's like, you know, I, I like, I truly, genuinely like my space, my isolation. It doesn't help me, but it makes me feel safe, it makes me feel comfortable, it makes me feel like I'm not being judged, you know. And those are all points of emphasis as a growing up, as a kid, you know what I mean? Things that, defensive mechanisms that I, worked into my equation after going through certain types of childhood trauma that I haven't been able to turn off, you know, and that's, that's what my problem is. That is my problem. It's not that I don't see the food and working or just something, some ego thing. That's only partially it. Cause there is an ego aspect of not wanting to go back to put on a security uniform and all that. We've discussed it, but the bigger problem is just, um, it's the same problem I've always had. It's just when I make up my mind that I don't want to do something, I have a very difficult time forcing myself to. And very difficult is an understatement. It's like it's like pulling my eyes out, trying to get this brain to do something that it's convinced itself it doesn't want to do. And so, um, it's illness. <laughs> it's nothing short. And I'm and I'm not ashamed of that. For some reason, it's not. So, as I move as a black man who speaks about mental health and talks about his open struggles, I know that some people who may see this may be offended by that because they're not necessarily see they don't see the fruit in doing that maybe they think that's wrong maybe they're trying their best to hold in what they have and i'm making it worse for them i'm sorry i truly am i can't i can't help you there I, I, all i can do is help myself uh but i know that there are people out there who exist that way especially in the black community we really have a negative connotation about mental health in some pockets of our community not everybody not myself but yeah some people are gonna be like nah you ain't supposed to be doing none of that you, you know none of that but the reality is i see mental health issues all over the place and some people are not trying to deal with them and if we deal with ourselves, we can, we, can, we can keep from doing certain damage to others. And I think when we do damage to others, we make mistakes that we don't intend to do that affect other people. We wish so badly that we did whatever we could have beforehand to keep that from happening. This is that. 
this is what people need to do to keep themselves from doing things that harm others by addressing their mental health when they feel most manic, when they feel most depressed, when they feel most out of it. Um, so that their energy can be better, so that they can at least address, address what's wrong and then ultimately uh, try to fix it. <laughs> so I'm, I'm, I'm a firm believer that this is strategy as it pertains to how you want to function in this world. It's not just something that you, you have to attack your ego with and, and, and swallow your pride and, and look vulnerable. No, this is, this is me doing what needs to be done, I feel. So, yeah, man, I'm very proud of my mental health path, and I hope that I can um, kind of be an example for some people. Uh, to keep that keep that keep that going man i want to pass that torch we need to continue that process you know i appreciate people like metal world peace who came out spoke about his mental health early on that's one of the reasons why i'm feeling as comfortable speaking in this camera right now is because i've seen some of the guys that i grew up um appreciating a great deal guys who i looked up to um you know taking their steps toward men mental health uh, addressing their mental health and things of that nature some of the uh, mcs and rappers that i follow they have mentioned the importance of mental health things of that nature so there's a lot of different ways that your culture can kind of influence people to do good things and i just think that we need to take it upon ourselves to see the fruit and doing some of that for us for our community so that's another reason why i do this uh so it is what it is man i think i think at the end of the day you know i have some situations that are outside of my control and and, and in order to fix my situation i have to do some things i don't uh, feel good about doing uh and because of it it's affecting my physical health. My stomach doesn't want to eat. My body don't want to work out. Um, and the stress is just killing it. It's kicking my butt, you know? You know, having to pay the cell phone bill, knowing that I got to cut into some type of money to get that out. And it has to come from the, from, from, from the Fidelity account. It must. You see what I'm saying? So, so the finale, finality and the realization that maybe I don't have a choice but to start the process of uh selling shares of fidelity in order to make so short term decisions work out uh you know that's that's definitely something that needs to be sorted through in this here day so i thank you guys for helping me with the process you know i thank you guys for allowing me to to bear my my circumstances and my soul to you um i'm sure there are other aspects of the situation that i'm not necessarily thinking about right now because i do have a lot of things a lot that i'm dealing with at once but um you know, doing things that are positive for yourself that helps a lot. You want to, you know, do art if you're an artistic person. Maybe write some poetry if that's your, your your thing. Cook. Various art forms that come naturally to you, I think, are the ways to go when you feel most manic, most anxious. Uh, to funnel that into things that are positive and uh, creative. And then what you'll see is that those very feelings of anxiety are also artists. That's what I'm learning. My anxiety is an artist <laughs> it's literally an entity of within myself that can do things that otherwise wouldn't be done you know what i mean if i'm not feeling manic i'm not going to get that type of art it only comes when i'm feeling this way so when i'm starting to realize that when you start to really discover yourself in that way then you start to realize how you can turn that negative energy turn those stressful feelings into something that can maybe even do some great things for you so as i'm starting to discover that aspect of it um, I reaffirm the fact that I want to continue that process uh, So I encourage you to do that too um, Yeah man So money, 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 money Anything money wise um, And that's not the way to phrase the thought It's money that's ultimately All of the root of my issues It's just cash bro If, if I were to receive an influx of maybe Hell, $3,000, $4,000 All of these concerns are completely gone and that's unfortunate, man, because that's chump change, you know, even for me, even from my broke behind, that's, I consider that chump change the way that I've um, viewed money. That's not money. You know, so this is the level I'm on. It's a level I'm on because growing up 37 years of my life, I've been dealing with this <laughs> without help, without help. And then people, you want to like, how the hell you live 37 years without making something of yourself, how you live 37 years without having a family, how you live 37 years without getting an education, how'd you live 37 years without straightening out certain things in your life that are so easy for others to do. And the reality is it's because this brain has been doing this thing since it woke up. Since, since it first became conscious, it's been doing this. Even as a baby, I had anxiety. Separation anxiety in regards to my mother was horrible. Not to say that I remember it, but I was told <laughs> it was horrible. 
So I, I was born anxious. I was born un, 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 in, insecure, so to speak. And uh, once certain traumas took place, once certain unsafe circumstances started to come about early on in my life, I guess naturally I just formed a defiance uh, in my head. And when you when that happens, it becomes something that you can't override because it's a part of your, it's it's, it's rooted in you. It's it's a part of uh, you grew with it. It's like how do you say this? You ever seen an apple that has like a a seed that's out of place? You know, have you ever seen that you like cut open an apple and you know the core is in the middle, but every once in a while you cut open an apple and this. And there'll be the seed like sitting on the side or something way out deep into the into the apple. And the reason why that is, is because from the beginning, something went wrong with the way it was formed and it just formed around it. You know what I mean? No different than a broken bone healing improperly. You know, it will it will fix itself in whatever form it's in. And that's exactly what happened to me. You know, I, I started developing these uh, defensive mechanisms before I actually was able to develop consciousness. And so now those defensive mechanisms work against me and I have no control over them, none. And uh, so they kick my butt and I continue to run into walls, very open with my eyes open, knowing that I'm running into them. And it's just, it's a miserable existence uh, as it pertains to going through those moments, very miserable. But uh, through the grace of my faith and the love of my mother who instilled in me a sense of uh, keep going, uh, it's why I'm not, looking to quit or to, to, to crash out or to put myself in a position to, to, to go into a deep drunken state or something. It's because my mother instilled in me a certain level of, of reach as it pertains to wanting to love myself, wanting to take care of myself, wanting to win this war on my mind. Um, so God, I just want to put myself in a position to help others. I don't want anybody to ever have to be alone like this. Like, and that was another thing that <laughs> kind of made it so that working at Santa Monica Place triggered me which is why i fell into depression after leaving that place it triggered me in a way that I, i'm probably just now realizing and the, the truth of the matter is I, I was walking around seeing people who were living in that reality that they were mentally ill that at one point they may have had it all together but it fell apart and it stayed stayed that way a part of me feels like that might be my fate i felt that even when i was a young man <laughs> I was going through my mental health and I behaved the way that I did that came naturally to me. The way that I perceived myself growing up was probably someone who would end up on the street homeless because I couldn't force myself to do things that needed to be done in order to fix my life. So I've always had this fear of ultimately being a wandering, crazy person that talks to himself. You know? Still very much think that's, that's real for me. That's a real thing. You know? It's a real thing. And so, like, you know, I, I just want to be in a position, hopefully I can do something with myself so that I can create or help fund or help think up avenues for people, wandering, transient, mentally ill individuals, so that we can start reopening some of these, um, these facilities that, that care for individuals like this, that can be affordable so that those who don't have no money can, can have the best of care. That will make our city safer. You know, if you, if you zoom all the way in to where I'm at, it'll make our city safer. Some of the issues we're having with crime, I think a big part of the problem is the mental illness. Uh, and as somebody who suffers from mental illness, I can tell you, you are not safe. <laughs> you are not safe. And that's one of the things that triggered me about being in Santa Monica. It made me ever so clear just how bad it is. And just how bad it is for somebody like me. You know what I mean? Like literally. That, that I can find myself in a situation where if, if things continue to get bad for me and I don't get help, I'll be one of those transients running around Santa Monica. Some of those guys walking nowhere, coming from nowhere. And it was a dude that I used to see all the time, every day. Homeboy was just wandering. Sometimes he had a bag of chips in his hand, same clothes the entire time I worked there. I worked there for a whole year, he never changed clothes. You know what I mean? Like, just lost. My good homie, Michael, one of my good buddies, he was a transient. The first time I met Michael, he walked up and told me, I'm a homeless man who's dealing with demons when you please pray for me. Like that, like that was what came to me, you know what I mean? And I was able to help him. Every time I saw him, I told you guys this, if you watch some of that particular video, but Michael was a guy who was a big dude, didn't get along with none of the guards but me. And that was because I always told him that I was praying for him, and I always told him that I believed in him, and I always told him that as long as he kept his, his consciousness on Christ, 
which is something I believe in, um, then then I think he'll find his way. And, you know, it's one of those situations where I couldn't help him. Couldn't do nothing for him. You know, and I know this guy's younger than me. He's only, what, 25, something like that? <laughs> Wandering. No help. And it was just a mini, a myriad of people like that. Just so many. And it was triggering for me because I know I'm like that. <laughs> Deep down, I know I'm like that. I've always been like that. It's just that I've been able to have a, a, a certain level of consciousness that allows me to uh, appear as if I'm fine. But there are certain things that, that just have to be done in regards to your mental health. And, and so with that, I just got a text from EDD verify something. Hopefully that means they're going to give me my money. Please, please God, right? But anyway, um, that's just the situation, man. At the end of the day, I tell you the truth. Um, I'm a highly functioning mentally ill person. I came to terms with that as a young man. I used to tell my mother that when I was little. I'm like, Mom, there's something wrong here. I'm not okay. She, you know, she did the best she could, but there was no help coming. And I just don't want to see nobody else go through that, bro. I don't. I want to be the last mf -er going through that. Because this is, this is hell, bro. And I'm not suicidal. You know what I mean? I, like, I'm very much a willing to, to, to stay in my life. I like being alive. Kind of scared of, you know. Heights. I don't want to jump off of nothing or drown or take a pill. And I'm cool. I want to live. Uh, but God, the quality of life, man, it's just like, you know, you got all these mental hurdles and different things that you know your ass need to do and you just can't tell yourself to do it. It's like, no, I'm not going to do it. It's like, bro, I need to do this or I'm going to fall apart. But it's like, nah, we can't do this because it's, it's going to make us feel a certain way. It's like, bro, feeling what? Like, you know, that's what I'm sitting here having this this mental struggle with myself. What are you talking about feeling what? We're going to be on the street. Feeling what? And it's like these type of inner battles all day long. All night long. Every day. Even in my dreams, I'm having some type of battle like that. So it's like, man, if, if you don't experience that, if you don't know how that feels, then trust and believe me. The mental illness perspective is something that's foreign to you. You have a perception of what it is. <laughs> But if you don't have that different aspect of it to where you are working against yourself in any way and you can't relate to that, if you don't have a bunch of different aspects of your personality that you're trying to work in tandem with, you don't know nothing about no mental illness, brother. You know nothing about that. And I try to tell people, like, you know, mental illness is not nothing to push aside. And every single action that everyone makes is a functionality of wherever their mental state is. If I make a bad decision... That I made that decision is a, is, a, is a product of where my mental health is. You know, so when they say, oh, he ain't crazy. He just did something deep evil. He did something stupid. That he chose to do something stupid, which is that of a counterproductive measure, is in fact a mental health disruption. Do you understand what I'm saying? The choice to be in bad circumstances is a product of your mental health. The choice to be in a space where things are not okay, but you're still going to sit here and be fine with it because you can't. That's mental health. You know, constantly making the wrong decisions, knowing that they're not right, constantly staying with somebody who's beating the hell out of you and you feel like that's love. It's mental health. Stockholm, mental health. Overworking, being a workaholic, mental health. Addiction, various forms of addiction, mental health. Cheating repeatedly on your spouse. Not being able to hold down a monogamous relationship. Mental health. All of it. All. Poor spending habits. Poor saving habits. Poor eating habits. Gluttony. Lust. We talk about those as sins. But the reality is they're a functionality of your mental health. <laughs> Whatever you've been through forced you into a position to see the world the way that you do. And because of it, you make those decisions as you do. And the healthier your mental health is, the more grounded you are, the better your options will be perceived in your mind. So all of this is true, man. All of this is real. You know, and I'm, I'm not telling you this because I read a book. I'm telling you this because I'm self, like self-diagnosing myself, redundantly speaking. That's what it is, man. So I struggle, probably going to struggle till it's over. But man, it ain't going to be for nothing. Because I'm going to do this on this camera. And we're going to see it. You know what I mean? And I'm going to help somebody. Let me best believe I'm going to help somebody. If I can't help myself, I'm going to help somebody. I'm determined. Even if I can't do it in the flesh. It's going to be in these cameras. Somebody's going to see something. So hopefully, 
Hopefully that'll be the case. Pray about it and take from this what you should. Address your mental health. Be sensitive to others. You don't know what they're going through. You don't know what they're battling with. If they make a bad decision, it's absolutely their mental health. Even if they are saying to your naked eye, the choices that they made are a functionality of whatever it is they're dealing with. Believe it, it's true. So that's what I got to say about that. Now I'm going to find out what ED is talking about. Last I heard, they ain't going to pay me for another six months. I'm in a bad space. Now they're talking about, please verify something. So I'll figure out what the hell that is. Hopefully it's them telling me, hey, it's back on the table. You're not going to be in trouble after all. Because I definitely need a little $8,000 or whatever they're going to give me over the next couple months. Uh, man, I think I deserve it, man. Cut and dry, bro. I deserve to get a W in this situation because I'm an essential worker. And I stand on that. I stand on that. While everybody else was in the house, I was riding it out. I was duking it out. I was doing what I had to do. And that's another thing that's kind of helped me. And kind of segue into something else. Sorry, this video long. But it helped me because... Um, I was able to look at some of the footage that I had on my phone from those previous eras and it reminded me of how I felt in the presence of others. Kind of helped me with my anxiety as it pertains to going back outside, looking at those footages. So I want to tell you guys, yeah, keep footage of things, especially when you're in a moment that looks good. You take a picture of a skyline or something like that, take a picture of yourself. If you're not the type of person that normally does those things, when you may find yourself in a situation like this, those, those visual memories will kind of help you, especially if you're somebody like myself, you know. So these are these are different tools that I'm picking up in this era. So hey, the fruit from all of this struggle, it's there. So that's what I want to say, man. This is my therapy session. I believe it's number 13 or something like that. Uh, I'll probably make another one before the day's over because I got a lot going on. Uh, but you know, I'm running out of space on this phone, so I got to cut this one short. But I thank you guys. Uh, please play, say a prayer for people who are dealing with what it is that I'm dealing with. If you if you're a believer, if you're not a believer, give us some good thoughts. We need them all. And and put yourself in a position to be be kind to somebody who's struggling in their head, man. Because I'm telling you, what we're dealing with, we could be in a place surrounded by loved ones. We could be in a place with a bunch of money. We could be in a place with the most beautiful things we've ever wanted, ever had. And we'll still find ourselves at war with ourselves because that war never cuts off. If they're like me, it never stops, man. So, yeah. That's it. Thanks. BDL 44. Peace.